up, everybody? Um, it is week 18 with the 770G. Um, this week, I'm going to talk about a couple different things. We're going to touch on the 770G, kind of how it's been performing for me. I'm going to uh, walk through the steps of my sensor change kind of quickly and then give everybody some hopeful tips and trips, uh, tips and tricks, excuse me, um, with the uh, Guardian sensor. Uh, maybe if you're having issues with the seven, or 770G, 670G, maybe you can try these uh, tips and tricks and see if that hopefully makes your sensor better for you. So let's get started with this week's video. Alrighty, so this week, um, how's the 770G been performing for me? Um, I did make some adjustments um, at the beginning of the week. Um, I kind of tweaked my carb ratio a little bit. Um, hadn't been eating as much. I felt like my insulin sensitivity had been changed a little bit. I wasn't using quite as much insulin as I should per um, a gram of carb or some carbs. So um, I kind of tweaked that. Um, so I made that change. It was a very small change. It wasn't anything crazy. Um, I think I went from 3.5 to 4. I think that was the change. So just like uh, very little. Um, I made that change. And um, because of that, I ended up later in the week, have, I made a couple more adjustments, just kind of trying to adjust myself to um, not use as much insulin, but still maintain the, the control that I had. Um, don't get me wrong, I um, am maintaining my blood glucose. Everything is staying fine. Um, auto mode has just been running a little higher, and I'm trying to get auto mode to come back down to uh, get me my time and range back a little bit better. Um, one of the reasons why I think I'm having a problem with auto mode um, and the problem that I experience personally, and I think that most of us experience this sometimes, I forget to uh, bolus before a meal. So I often end up bolus about the time that I'm getting ready to eat or maybe 10 or 15 minutes before I eat. Um, me personally, I need about 30 or 45 minutes before I eat to kind of give myself, to, or give my body time to uh, absorb that insulin properly. And if I do that, um, I do like a nice little pre-bolus and then do a secondary bolus later if I'm having a high carb meal, that typically um, helps resolve my um, my high. It will rise up just a little bit and then come down. So for example, last night, um, I did remember to bolus on time. I bolused for about 40 grams of carbs. Um, I did have a salad. Um, with a mixture of different things in it. Um, I know you're thinking 40 grams of carbs for salad. That's not that much, but this particular restaurant does have ice cream, and I did treat myself to some ice cream. Um, so that's kind of what the bulk of the carbs were. Um, I did eat a little more, more ice cream than the 40 grams of carbs were, so I had just a, I added a little bit more carbs to that. Um, it kind of helped me, um, and my blood glucose didn't go over 160, I don't believe. It stayed, um, it was already around 120-ish by the time we actually start to eat, to eat our food, dinner. Um, it was around 100, and it stayed within that range and rose up to about 160, I believe, and then kind of came back down to where I'd like it, around 120. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how things are going with that. So today is my sensor change day. I believe I have like five or six hours left of this sensor. It could be a little bit less. So I'm going to kind of start my new sensor early. So I typically have my sensors on my arm. You can see here's this one. Um, I typically only use one piece of the Medtronic oval tape. However, this sensor here the little tail piece that flips over the transmitter um, did not want to stick to the transmitter. So when I remove it this week, I'm going to give it a good cleaning. So that way next week's will stick. Um, so that, that left um, that little tail piece sticking out. So I ended up removing it and I had to put the second piece of tape on the back. Um, because I only use one piece of tape, um, I do have good sensor uh, luck with them not falling off and stuff on my arms. I do have two extra pieces from that last box. So I'm going to use um, one of them for this new sensor that we're going to put on here in a second. And then I'll have one for a spare. If I need it later in the week, I can put the second one on to keep the sensor on. Um, if not, I kind of collect them and build them up. And occasionally I do have a bad week where I'm having to use more. Um, and then I end up using my extras. But right now I have two extras. This sensor just came out of a new box. 
So let's get started with this process. Okay, so just in case you are maybe thinking about switching to Medtronic um, and you want to know what's included in a sensor change, so here is our Surter. Um, this is the charger for the transmitter, one sensor, and then your Medtronic oval tape. Medtronic provides enough oval tape um, to put two pieces per sensor. So um, in a box of five sensors, there's an envelope that has this oval tape label on it, and it has 10 pieces of tape. So I, like I said just a second ago, I only personally use one, so I've got one pulled out. So um, it's very easy to open up the sensor, lay it down on a flat surface, there is a hole um, in the uh, serter. That's where this long piece is gonna go. It's gonna ease down on there. It's gonna click. That way you know the sensor is locked in place. Apply two fingers on these little feet and then slowly pull up on the serter. And then if you look in here, you can see that we have the sensor and the needle. And then there's just a piece of um, adhesive on this part. And then here's some like tape that we'll have to remove so thanks to a viewer he gave me the idea of removing this tape before we stick it on so it kind of helps the sensor stick um, typically it would pull off after it's stuck to your skin but um, I've been doing it this way for the past couple weeks just experimenting and it has been working very well for me so um, it's just another tip for you guys if you want to try it if you have problems one-handed trying to remove that piece of um, material to get the adhesive to stick then you can okay, try this trying to get you guys far enough away to get everything that I need to show you in one frame so we've got our starter with our sensor in there I like to use my arm placement I typically put the top of the sensor to where the transmitter is at the bottom when I place it on my arm um, when Looking for, for my arm, I try to put it in this bit of fatty tissue right here on the back side of my arm. Um, I, that's where I, I find that the fatty areas tend to not hurt as much, and they typically work very well for me. So um, this is where I'm going to try to uh, place my sensor. So I've got everything ready. I line it up. I try to get it to where it's about centered on the back side of my arm. And then I just slowly squeeze the um, the buttons on the starter. A little click. Um, it could sting just because it's entering. So now, as you can see, we've got the sensor or the yeah the sensor is stuck on. I give it a second for this adhesive to um, adhere to the skin. It typically works once it reaches a warm surface. Um, I take two fingers these well these two fingers and place them on the sensor itself and then the top two fingers grab this needle well let me try it sometimes this is a little difficult one-handed all right so i got it you heard that little click that was the needle withdrawing into this so that way it, you don't have to worry about sticking yourself um and then we have our sensor on <clears throat> so now i'm going to take my piece of tape it's number numbered one and then two excuse me two so i'm going to remove the one the fat part of the tape at the top goes this way so it'll go over the top of the sensor so i ease that down on the top and then push my fingers like this to put both pieces down slowly pull off two and then i reach under and grab the second two and slowly pull down on that and then i lightly let that adhere to the skin. You don't want it to be too tight because this adhesive does stretch and if it stretches tight and your body moves, your arm, it's gonna move it and it's gonna eventually fall off. It's not gonna, not gonna be, um, it's not gonna stay on the whole week. So um, this is how I have everything. Um, from this point on, I'm gonna wait um, a couple more hours. I'm probably gonna wait two to three hours with my sensor on like this. Um, it cannot get wet, it needs to remain dry. Um, this process of doing this is called marinating. So often if your sensors aren't as accurate on day one and then they get better um, after day one, you can marinate your sensor. Some people place the sensor on just like this um, 24 hours before they would take off the old. Um, if you have an old transmitter, um, an older Medtronic transmitter, you can place that on this sensor to do the watertight seal 
for your um, showers or whenever you bathe. So that way it keeps water from ruining this sensor. Um, so over the next in about two hours, I will remove the old sensor and place the transmitter on my charger. Um, and then as that charges, it typically takes 30 to 45 minutes for me. Um, I will let that charge up. And then once it's ready, I will place it on this sensor. And that kind of cuts down a little bit on my warm up time. Um, because it's already, uh, the interstitial fluid is getting on the um, inside of the sensor and it's already starting to get wet so it kind of reduces the warm-up time slightly sometimes if you let it marinate for just a short period of time an hour or two it won't reduce the warm-up time uh, sometimes the longer it sits on there the kind of the faster the sensor warms up um, everybody's body is different everybody has different levels of interstitial fluid as it fluctuates depending on your hydration level so that's just um, something that varies per person. So with that being said, I personally like to place my center in a fatty area on a straight piece of my body. Most of the time it's on my arms, one side or the other on the outside. Um, sometimes I will place my sensor in my upper thigh on the outer side where your pocket would be, um, just slightly below the waistline in the fatty area of the thigh on the outer leg. That is my backup worst case scenario. That's where I'm gonna put my sensor um, just because it's another flat surface of my body that doesn't have a lot of fat moving on it um, and the sensor tends to stick there very well. Um, if I'm gonna be doing a lot of swimming or something, I will also move my sensor down to my leg um, so that way my bathing suit kind of protects the sensor from the motion of the water. Um, I, Pat it on my arms and sometimes jumping into a pool or something like that would knock the sensor off. So um, that's kind of where I personally place my sensor. The Guardian sensors or any sensor with Medtronic is not um, approved for you to be putting them on your thigh or your legs. They're only approved for abdominal use and the arms. So just keep that in mind. Um, so with keeping that sensor placement in mind, um, I said earlier about my hydration level and the interstitial fluid. Um, everybody's different. Um, with that being said, everybody's bodies are different in the way they absorb um, water and stuff like that to stay hydrated. Um, if you're having problems with your sensor, you're not getting good readings or your sensor reading is dramatically off from your finger stick readings, try drinking more water. Um, I am a primarily a water drinker. I occasionally drank Coke or Sprite Zero. Um, that was just typically what I liked. Um, here recently, I'm trying to get myself off of Cokes, so I haven't had one for a couple days now, but I'm a primary water drinker regardless. Um, so in doing that, I haven't personally experienced any issues with my sensor readings. Most of the time, they're very accurate. My calibration last night before bed, um, the sensor was reading 132 and my finger stick was 130. So they're very close together. With that being said, the time in which you calibrate also makes a difference with your sensor reading. So, for example, um, I wake up in the morning, typically my blood sugar will rise a little bit, um, mainly because one, I'm waking up, and two, because shortly after I wake up, I disconnect my pump altogether, suspend it, and then I take my shower without the pump. So that's a short period of time without any insulin delivery. So once I place my pump back on, I'm in auto mode, it notices my sugar starts to rise. It takes it a little while to do that correction and get me back down to where it wants to maintain. I have a maintainable uh, glucose value from the sensor. So I try to calibrate after that time period. So let's say, for example, I wake up at seven, I'm gonna wanna calibrate around nine-ish after I've kind of got going and I'm done with that. If you're gonna eat breakfast, you might wanna try to wait a little bit after that. Um, if you're first waking up in the morning and you can calibrate really quickly before your sugar spikes, you can try that, but then remember that time with that sensor's calibrating um, is a time for your sugar to be rising. Basically, you want to calibrate when your blood sugars are steady as possible. So, for example, right now, my sugar is 148 on my sensor, and if I did a finger stick, it hopefully would be close within that. So let's Okay, check. as you can see, my sensor value is 144. I stepped away from the camera for just a second to go grab my meter, and I washed my hands. I've got my AccuCheck Guide Link meter here. It's waiting for me to apply the blood to the strip.
can pull this up so you guys can see it. So the meter reading has my blood sugar at 155 and then my glucose was 144. So it's close, but it's not as close as I typically like to see it. Um, I am going to go ahead and calibrate since it is off. Um, so to speed up this transmission process, if you wait for the pump to power off, it will auto send. But if you don't want to wait that long, you can press the back button and it'll go ahead and send the data over to the pump. So now I've got it. I'm going to confirm my BG at 155. I'm going to calibrate and take the bolus correction. Auto mode typically only gives you a bolus correction if your value is over 150. So I've got that. I'm going to go ahead and take that correction and let it calibrate and get everything. So, um, that BG reading and the sensor value wasn't as close as I'd like it to be, but it was within right around 10 units off, which is acceptable um, within the ranges of the interstitial fluid and your BG. Some of you who aren't familiar with this process would think, why is that's not that very accurate? Um, the actual blood glucose value is current and your interstitial fluid is a layer of fluid between your uh, it, in between your cells in your skin. So it could take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes for um, your glucose value that's in your bloodstream to get to that interstitial le level. So that takes a little that has a little bit of a delay um, in your with it's a delay of what your sensor values are versus what your blood sugar reading actually is. So if your blood sugar starts to spike about 10 or 15 minutes later, your sensor will actually show that spike and the same thing with a drop. Often, oftentimes you'll see that your blood sugar could be higher than your sensor value when it's rising. And then once your blood sugar is dropping, your sensor value could be lower than your actual blood sugar. When your sugar is going high, your body is trying to get rid of that extra glucose. So it's telling all the cells in your body to here have extra glucose. I got to get this out of the bloodstream, kind of like rush hour traffic with an interstate system. And then um, the adverse effect side of that is when your blood sugar is actually dropping, your body, your bloodstream is trying to keep that blood glucose for the cells that actually need it. So your interstitial fluid could be lower than your actual blood sugar reading. Kind of trying to keep all the traffic on the interstate versus letting all the exits um, take cars. So just kind of how I kind of picture um, that whole process and how it works. Um, hopefully that helps explain it to some of you. Um, so kind of recap of what we talked about. Um, sensor placement for if you're having problems, try to find a fatty tissue area that's on a straight part of your body, like your arms obviously are the best. Um, so that way that, that skin and that fat's not gonna move around too much and make the sensor fall off. That could cause the sensor to pull out slightly and then not be as accurate. And then the next thing is drink plenty of water. Um, the more water you drink is going to help your body flush out toxins and other things and help your overall kidney function and everything else that diabetes could mess up. So that's a good plus for you guys to constantly drink water. Um, and then your calibrations. Try to calibrate at times when your blood sugar is as steady as it can be. Only you know what's best as far as your blood sugars and how that your body works. Um, mine could be 100% different from yours. Um, and that's the next thing that leads me into is these systems, the CGMs, the pumps, and all that type of stuff are built to try to be a one-size-fits-all. So it's up for us, the users, to know what's best for us and, excuse me, um, and um, kind of make those systems work best for us. So just because I'm on auto mode doesn't mean that my diabetes is on autopilot or cruise control and I can just do whatever I want and the pump will take care of it. Auto mode requires a lot of work and out of that, lar that large amount of work, I get better control of my diabetes and I can sleep assured at night knowing that the pump will take care of me while I'm not awake. So that's kind of how I feel about my diabetes and everything in general. I hope that kind of helps everybody. This is going to wrap up week 18 with the 770G. It has been a huge improvement over my 670G, and I'm looking forward to the FDA approval of the 780G towards the end of the year. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're still watching this video, um, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks.